What's up, everybody? Welcome to Kind of Funny Games Daily for Monday, November 11th, 2019. I'm one of your hosts, Greg Miller, alongside Snow Bike Mike. I'm back, baby. Make some noise. Get loud in the chat because Snow Bike Mike is here on a Monday, ready to bring the energy. Now, why is Snow Bike Mike a uh, Monday appearance quite odd for you? What were you doing around here, these parts? Greg, I had a wonderful weekend seeing one of my best friends, Greg Miller, host a wing eating competition for a great charity out yep, there. Yep. And then I got to host my first ever live esports event up at 2K headquarters with the Golden State Warriors esports affiliate Warriors Gaming Squad. How was that? It was an incredible experience, an experience of a lifetime, some would say, Greg. Yeah. I loved it. I had a ton of fun. <laughs> Big shout out to the kind of funny best friends that came out and saw me. Of course, Belinda, Joey, Yousef came by, Kevin A. Sex, Shaw Doggy was there, and of course, my good friend Christian all came out in support. Hell yeah. It was really a special moment. Uh, best of five, big money on the line, and a chance for me to really flex that shoutcasting skill. So is, is that something you want to do more of? I mean, obviously, everybody follows you on twitch.tv slash Mike. They know you out there. Pug army for life. But... That's you playing games. That's you doing the hype reports. That's you doing stuff. Do you want to do more shoutcasting, you think? Definitely. I aspire to be like Golden Boy, yep. like Courage JD, my friend Dirk. I really love the shoutcasting aspect of esports. I think it fits well with my hosting skills. Yeah. And it's a lot of fun to inform the you know audience out there of what's going on, what you see on the screen, but also to bring the hype at certain moments, bring in the expert analysis that you want to hear and elevate that broadcast. Now, speaking of hype, Snowbike Mike, after... You did this hosting gig. You didn't go to bed. Never. You drove all the way out to San Francisco, which is a long way from 2K Studios, <laughs> if you didn't know. <laughs> and when you got there, you went to Day of the Devs. Uh, Greg, you know what? You informed me of Day of the Devs, and I said, I'm going to chug two Frappuccinos, yep. and we're going to go down and see what this is all about. So I've been to South Bay area, all the way up to the North Bay, down to South Bay, back to North Bay, down to South Bay again. Yeah. I'm all over the place. What did you think of Day of Devs? And what is Day of the Devs? You explain it to everybody. Uh, Day of the Devs, you know, I, I can't give the perfect explanation, but to me, it's an awesome way for indie developers to go out there and show their games to a large audience. It actually yeah. reminded me of PAX West, being up on the sixth floor, yep. seeing that this summer. You walk in to this gigantic industrial warehouse, and there is games, 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 as far as the eye can see. In multiple bars, which is always good. Yeah. <laughs> multiple bars. There was a concert. There yeah. was food trucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for me, I thought it was a really cool idea. It's free to the public there was people of all ages all walks of life there which i thought was really cool yeah and a great way to celebrate those men and women out there that are putting in a lot of work to create something that they love yeah greg rice and double fine if you didn't know of course tim schaefer is the company he was there too but i give it to greg rice uh, every year organized day of the devs it's just a giant uh, or a uh, place to go show games they don't have to be indie that was the funny thing i was talking about it because it was the smallest indie studios and then star wars jedi fallen order and everybody was like really and, he, and greg was like, hey man, it's open to anybody. Anybody wants to come show their game, come show your game. That's what it's about. And so the majority of them are indies. They are uh, people you usually see at the indie mega booth, but they have this giant fl floor space. They have all these different areas. It's the same thing, you know, uh, Greg and Spaff and Double Fine are so uh, behind during Judges Week having indie game night. Uh, they do Day of the Devs, a mini kind of during GDC, where at Alamo Draft House they pick like 10 or 8 games that come up on the stage and show their game on the big screen and explain it. But this was obviously, yeah, we could walk around and play. That's really cool. I thought it was a great time. And actually, speaking with a kind of funny best friend out there, he said Kingdom Hearts 3 had been there before, yeah. too. So yeah, the year before. Like you said, it, it might be indie-focused, but anybody can show up. So yeah. pretty cool to see that. Any highlights you want to throw out before we get in the news? Uh, well, you know, you stole my joke about Star Wars. I was going to tell what you about a little That's indie game. But uh, i got to say, Psychonauts 2 was really cool. I love yeah. the idea of somebody playing there, a pretty big monitor that you could watch on, and everybody had their own headphones. It looked like a silent disco yeah, yeah, yeah. amongst the crowd. So I, I want to highlight that. But, of course, I had to shut everything down. No game matters because why? Skatebird was there. And I am evolving from not only a skatebird, but a skate hawk wow. into a freedom eagle. That's Wow. Oh, my gosh. I'm flying. What an evolution. Ramp. I'm hitting the rails. I'm grinding left and white. I'm tweeting all over the place. But I got to say, it was really cool. Yeah. That was awesome to see that game live and in person, be able to go hands-on from seeing it at PAX West sure, with you. The showcase, and yeah. uh, being right next to the developer during our PAX West tournament. So yeah. it was really cool to be there and be able to play it. Uh, two shout-outs I want to give out before we get on to it. Uh, number one would be Not For Broadcast. Uh, it is the game that if you ever said, man, Kevin's job looks stressful. This would be doing that, where you sit at a control. You're in like a public access TV studio, right? You sit there. You have to pick the ads, put them in the tape player. You have to cut between the cameras, stand people when they're talking. There's this little interference mini game of moving a. It was like. 
they they have all this live action footage like of the news anchors talking and you have to cut around it and stuff. Yeah, yeah. It was really really well done. Yeah, yeah. Kevin's pulling Kevin's it up bring right it up now. Right there for you. Many a true nerd, but you see it right there. Like you're using either the mouse or your actual keyboard to go through and do all this different stuff and <laughs> make the right cuts and get the things. At one point, I had a sensor guy who was drunk. I was like, this is fun. I like this. And then the other one I tweeted about it as well was 100 Days. Mm. This is a game where you it's a wine simulation game. You own the vineyard and everything else. So you have to plant the seeds. You're, yeah, it's like a turn-based strategy game. You have this little plot that you have to go in and you you'd spell out 100 but I don't even know if you're going to find it cuz it's it's from Italy it's on it's it's not going to be here till 2021. Uh, you go through you put down all the things. It's like a card game. You're making the wine, you're bottling the wine, you're selling the wine, you're setting your prices. They're giving you reviews on the wine and stuff. It's a sim game. It's a wine sim the game. Here it is. Great job, Kevin. I didn't think he could do it. Kevin did everybody. Round of applause for Kevin. Yeah. Give it well, you love. see, yeah, you put it down there. The numbers uh, dictate how many turns it's going to take for that thing to happen. Oh, where cool. it like, okay. matures. Here's you go through. You can examine your grapes. Got to examine wrong with those them. grapes, is right. Make you got to examine them grapes. But enough about that. Let's talk about Kojima, 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 some Blitz Chung news, and a few other things because this is Kind of Funny Games Daily. Each and every weekday on a variety of platforms, we run you through the nerdy video game news you need to know about. If you like that, be part of the show, patreon.com slash kindoffunnygames. You can go there. Give us your questions, comments, concerns, everything under the video game sun. Then... Tune in to watch us record the show live, twitch.tv slash kindoffunnygames. If you're watching live, you have a special job. Go to kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong and tell us what we screw up as we screw it up so we can set the record straight for everybody watching later on youtube.com slash kindoffunnygames, roosterteeth.com, and listening on podcast services around the globe. Snow Mike, Mike, I didn't tell you ahead of time, but I want you to know this kind of funny pen that I gave you is yours to keep. Oh, that is our parting gift for you coming yes. on here. You understand? Yes, they're they, killer looking pens. They are great looking pens. Uh, housekeeping for you. First off, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for Extra Life 2019. Team Kind of Funny has raised more than $100,000. Oh Big achievement. Right? Yeah, that, that was like a, a dream come true for me for a long, long time to see if we could ever get that number. We've always gotten close. Smashed it this year. Uh, thanks to everybody who streamed over the weekend. I know OK Beast did a big one. Yep. I knew uh, Kind of Funny New York did one. They were all over it stuff. Yep. Everybody's killing it out there. Remember, you can still donate kindoffunny.com slash extra life uh, throughout the rest of the year. But more importantly, you can still raise money. You can do your own streams. You can yep. raise money for the Children's Miracle Network. Pick a local hospital that means something to you. Join Kind of Funny and get out there. Team Kind of Funny now ranked number nine, but more importantly, more than $100,000 raised. Thank you all so much. Far from over, Greg. You guys fought through adversity. You were getting do. DDoSed. You still made it through with no, the team. Nothing stops And then guess what? There's more going on up in Minnesota. Your best friends, the Land of 10,000 Lakes competition will be being held live on Saturday. A lot of Minnesota best friends will be there. Yeah. Will a special guest show up? I don't know. Is it you? We'll see. I can't what? say anything. I can't say anything. No, like Mike here. You're gonna enjoy it. Have you ever been to Minnesota? <laughs> no, never. Oh man, you're gonna. I'm a traveling. Time. I mean, it's gonna be this freezing week. and terrible, but you're. I mean, it'll be great. <laughs> uh, on top of that, ladies and gentlemen, love, sex, and stuff is debuting live Friday, this Friday, November 15th, from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. Uh, one of our shows we said we would do in 2019 is Love, Sex, and Stuff, which is now a call-in advice show. Oh, yes. You do not want to miss this. Twitch.tv slash Games Friday, November 15th, 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. Pacific time. Of course, that'll be on YouTube later, I assume. Right, Kev? That's got to be. That sounds right. That sounds right. I don't that know what right. um, Thank you to our Patreon producers, Matthew, Carolina, Blackjack, Zach Parsley, and Mohammed Mohammed. Today, we're brought to you by Brooklyn and Manscaped and Escape the Invasion, but I'll tell you about that later. For now, finally, let's begin the show with what is and forever will be the Roper Report. <laughs> time for some news. Six items on the Roper Report. Oh, Baker's Dozen. And if you're keeping track at home, 50% of them are about Hideo Kojima. <laughs> Number one, uh, Kojima had some comments about the U.S. criticism of Death Stranding. This is Alessio Plolumba at WCCF Tech. How'd I do it? I that was it? really I felt nice. good on that little... uh, In an interview with Italian publication TGCom24, published on the release day, Hideo Kojima had the chance to discuss the early reception of critics to Death Stranding. While the average score was quite high, there were some low scores as well, coming mostly from U.S. publications. Kojima attributed this to the preference of first person shooter games, whereas Death Stranding, in his own words, flies higher. Quote, I must say that the game reviewed rave, the game received rave, rave reviews, especially in Europe and Japan. Here in the United States, however, we have had stronger criticisms. Perhaps it is a difficult game to understand for a certain type of critic and audience. Americans are great fans of first-person shooters, and Death Stranding isn't one. 
it flies higher. I always try to create new things, and disputes and discussions are fine. But it must be said that the Italians or the French have a different artistic sensibility that allows them to appreciate this kind of very original product. Not only in video games, but also in cinema. With regard to the direction that Kojima wants to steer his studio towards, he mentions straddling the line between independent and AAA game productions. Mainly because this allows him to still leave his own mark. Quote, it's a bit of a challenge between independents and blockbusters. I want to be in the middle and take the positive things of both these worlds. It happens that some very authorial games are sold maybe only in Japan and leave with a low budget. But when they try to, imp- pr- when they try to propose themselves abroad to become international products, they lose their soul a little as the creative director's imprint slowly disappears. The larger the project becomes, the more the creative face disappears, which also applies to Western games. End quote. Snowbike Mike, how do you feel about that? Greg, is Kojima saying I don't have the je ne sais quoi? Yes, so he's saying, like he's saying you're uncultured swine. Is he saying all I drink is Bud Light? If it I ain't a know? hostess cake from the corner store, you ain't eating is what he's saying. Is he getting a little salty at me? I got to <laughs> say, a very interesting one. I mean, of course, a lot of hot takes around this, left and right. And I, from what I'm seeing, a lot of my friends are very positive on this. So I don't know. Oh, from Death Stranding. Yeah, from Death Stranding here in the American audience. Well, it's these clowns that. at these big wig sites. that They've lost touch. These IGN.coms. They don't know what us kids want in our games. They don't know about the <laughs> Men in the street, Mike, exactly. waiting in line hours upon hours just to see a tidbit of this game, right? I just wanted to see 25 minutes. It took me three hours just to get in line to watch it. But you know what? I'm loving the game. I'm yeah. enjoying it. And my friend group, my community, everybody seems to enjoy it a lot. The thing about it is it reminds me so much of that tweet that got put up on Kojima's. Remember where he was like, I did everything. And everybody was like, <laughs> Whoa, fuck you, you have a team, yada, yada, yada. And then uh, finally there, there was like, I think it was uh, Ashcraft actually, Kotaku, who was like, translated, this doesn't sound as harsh. This is how he, and I like that this is an article that I've seen a lot of people up in arms about on Twitter. That So you're telling me a native Japanese speaker had his Japanese translated to Italian, and then Italian, <laughs> then the Italian site wrote about it and quoted him, and then that got translated into English, and we're gonna sit here and die on this hill that he's saying like America, oh, they're yeah. too smart. Like, no, it, it, you understand the point he's making, right? If we dial it back three, you know, three notches of DefCon, it's like, sure, like, how? First off, foreign films are very different. I think you look at uh, whenever I am shown a foreign film, it is usually like, wow, this is a different pace. And not every foreign film, obviously, that's a broad brush. But you know what I mean, like the artsy ones you see that, yeah. oh man, this killed at Sundance. Or this is on Netflix now, and I got to read subtitles the whole time, and it's in black and white. All right, kind of boring. It didn't go anywhere. She was pregnant. Was I get it. Uh, yeah, right. Thank you. <laughs> Roma wasn't a good movie, everybody, right? <laughs> Where was the shooting? See, that's what I'm going back to there with was, the first person shooter. shooting. I remember, too, yeah. and a big stick. Yeah. And a, a guy had a big stick, too, big if you know what I'm dick. saying. Yeah, you know what I'm saying over around. there, right? Love and sex stuff. <laughs> and love, sex, and stuff. It's a new show. A new show with a new title. Um, yeah, I thought it was a... I think it's a, a victim of translation. Yes. And then I also don't think it's that offensive because I don't think he's 100% wrong, right? Like, I mean, this game, when you is being criticized, right, it is being criticized for being boring. Nothing happens. You know what I mean? And, like, again, I think depending on how you want to take that criticism or how you feel about the game, you walk away with a different opinion. Where I watched, like, uh, uh, Jim Sterling, the Jim, Jim, uh, the Jim Pressions he put up on it, I was in hysterics. Because I don't agree with what he's saying, but he is presenting it hilariously, and I totally see how he got to that conclusion. And that's what I love about this game and why I love that it is art, unabashedly art, of like, you're going to look into this and you're going to come out with what you want to come out with, you know, what you bring into it. Definitely. It's a really different than what you would see here in America with the mainstream audience looking for the Call of Duties, the Apex Legends, the Fortnite that really dominate the scene of gaming. Right. But there are all these awesome games that come out with a different kind of, you know, je ne sais quoi, as we say it. And something that makes you think you about to my it. wife? <laughs> <laughs> we were talking all weekend, is right? Um, but I think it's a lot of fun, and it's something you kind of take a step back and you try a new experience. You see something different, and you know Kojima's name from the Metal Gear Solid franchises. You know what you're going to get some big time cinematics you're gonna get a beautiful open world that we see right now and a lot of big time names you know norman reedus walking around who doesn't want to hang out with daryl from the walking dead who doesn't want to see this story evolve with him mads mickelson yeah you got you know guillermo del toro showing up yeah and some really wild off the wall characters so i think a lot of people here 
like we talked about in my community and everybody around us here in America has taken a chance. And I think they are liking what they're seeing with something a little bit different to switch up the monotony, the normal of what we usually play. Well, that's what I love. I love when games want to get weird. And I love that, again, to what Kojima is saying, I think the second quote actually is the most interesting, right, of him talking about existing in this space between AAA and indie, right? Because it is that technically Kojima Productions is an independent studio. PlayStation doesn't own them, right? They this is, you know, they're publishing it first party and 505 is putting on PC, different ball of wax. But they obviously finance this game to make it happen. But since it's Kojima and he's a bigger name similar to AAA, they can get a huge AAA actors in there. They can get really, really weird and everybody's gonna be okay with it. And it's gonna be this game that I think is super interesting and super fascinating. I can't wait to get back to in Platinum because mm -hmm. I wanna go through and do more of it. And I don't want that deadline on top of me to play it. I do wanna just go explore. But I totally get everybody who doesn't like it. When people say they don't like it and they explain, well, I get it. Yeah, totally. Yeah, I think it would be different for me as I'm just jumping in. I've had a big weekend away from the PlayStation 4. I've got to play about three to five hours where it's still new, fresh, different to me. Right? Mm -hmm. We'll see how that feels a little bit later sure. on. And I was a big advocate for I wanted to check out the quote-unquote movie-goer mode, which was the super easy setting. And I was hoping for more, you know, quick easy time on that a little bit faster pace but it's definitely still going to be the same pace from point a to point b yeah yeah and we'll see how i feel 10 hours in if i change my tone about it but i am digging in i read another article about this actual statement and they took the approach of like maybe he was playing up the italian audience you know because he was out there sure. giving that interview trying to sure. you know bolster their confidence a little bit you listen know? you know you guys are the smart ones you know what i mean get on over there you don't want to be with the american swine over yeah, yeah, yeah. you guys invented pasta right La pizza. <laughs> Come on. You know what I mean? Get over there. Your country shaped like a boot. That I'd be great at this interview. Let me out there and say, <laughs> sell it on it. You know what I mean? But yeah, I don't. I think, again, it's something that's getting lost in translation. I do do not think Kojima would be like, fuck America. These guys suck. They, they're not smart enough for it. When yeah. in reality, he's more saying, I think, to your point, Fortnite. You know what I mean? Rainbow Six. You see the games that are really, really big here and have an ongoing audience that's there to come out with something this weird. It is weird, and I think it's one of the weirdest games I've ever played. And then I've seen, and it's funny to see people make that statement, and either have people go, "Yeah, totally," or "Wait, haven't you played these games? This game?" And it's like, I really haven't. No, like yes. you know what I mean. Like even though I, I and, and me, I only speak to my experience. You know, even though I like to think that I play so many different things, and I get in the even getting into the indies, the little bit I'm able to, like I'm not getting into the super fucking weird. I'm not on itch.io, you know, really going through the weirdest games that are out there, playing all these different things. Nor I think you know to Kojima's point here to that the Japanese games uh, uh, landscape is so diverse. When you go over there and the the games that are either wacky or touching or they, like there's just so many different things over there that even the ones that do get brought over here and localized you're like okay wow that's different well i'm rubbing this girl on the vita they're way weirder over there yeah. <laughs> that's just the stuff you're like let's translate and get over here they're way weirder over there so i think there is a difference in terms of culture and what you're expecting from a video game and i Definitely. think that's what he's getting at and a positive one for him maybe it opens the door for people like you and i or others who might not want to dip their toes into something like that totally maybe they buy into this they say hey that was fun I'm willing to try something a little more artsy, a little more fartsy that I not, might not play. Exactly. And then you crack a Budweiser and you salute the flag. <laughs> Number two, we have some concerns out of Japan about the Death Stranding review in Famitsu. This is Brian Ashcraft at Kotaku. Online in Japan, fans are wondering why the mascot character and the official representative of the company's biggest game magazine, Famitsu, appear in Death Stranding. Fumitsu recently gave the game a perfect score, one of only 26 to get the coveted 40 out of 40 in the publication's history. Uh, a thread on 2chan, I assume, right? 2CH. Two, two I'm going to go with 2chan. I like It that. sounds bad, though, because 8chan uh, was so bad. Yeah, let's not go oh, with 2CH, we'll say. <laughs> the company's biggest bulletin board pointed out these Fumitsu-related appearances. The news is being widely covered by Japan's biggest gaming blogs, like... Hachimi Kiku and okay. my game news flash. That's about that was easier okay. for me. I guess the cameos are supposed to be Easter eggs, but things become murky because Famitsu also reviewed the game. They have an image in their article. The above image appeared on 2CH, 2 2Chain, 2 whatever we're calling, showing Hirokazu Hamamura uh, in game as well as his name in the closing credits as a special appearance. Hamamura used to be Famitsu's editor in chief, but now is the president of the magazine's publisher, Enterbrain. Uh, as of writing, uh, Hamamura's official Twitter accounts list him as Famitsu Group Representative. In game, he is the collector, and according to his character bio, his father was a video game magazine editor in the days before Death Stranding is set. At that time, online media overtook print, the bio adds. Uh, like the vast majority of dialogue in the game, the collector flatters Sam. However, according to Chu Tu Chan, uh, Hamamura's Japanese subtitle reads all the stuff, which means uh, you'll surely get in the Hall of Fame. 
and that's a, a quote. Uh, <laughs> High-scoring games in Famitsu are tagged with, which basically means Hall of Fame entrant or mm. Hail, no Hall of Famer. Uh, this specific Japanese subtitle can be seen in the above image. In English, the added green Japanese text reads, Since before Death Stranding went on sale, it will surely get in the Hall of Fame, below the previously mentioned subtitle. Kotaku, however, has yet to confirm this specific line in-game firsthand. Even though Hamamura is now an exec, when, the game, when game fans in Japan see him, they think of Famitsu. Mm. This is why he is in Famitsu's group's designated rep. Uh, the publication's official mascot character, Neki the Fox, is also in the game. Uh, commenters on 2chan certainly have opinions about this, saying that, saying that Famitsu's articles and reviews are already merely PR or that this situation makes them feel uneasy or gross. There are also the inevitable conspiracy theories about scores as well as some real talk. Quote, putting a perfect score on something you appeared in is unpleasant, one commenter wrote. Another added, appearing in the game as an advertisement is okay, but reviewing the game is not. Uh, one 2chan commenter chimed in, if you're going to appear in a game, don't review it. Snow Mike, Mike, I want you to unpack all of this, but I want Frankfurter to kick it off. Good. He wrote in to patreon.com slash kindoffunnygames and says, Good morning, Greg, and Mr. Snow Bike Mike. Death Stranding has been out in the public for three-ish days, and it's all anyone can see on gaming websites. One of those gaming websites, Famitsu, is getting some criticism for the fact that one of their execs, an old editor-in-chief, makes an appearance in this game. While this cameo is just one of many in the game, there seems to be a bit of unease with one, this one, because the website reviewed the game and gave it a perfect score. This revelation fuels the fire of rumors that some people are paid for reviews. With a prominent figure from the company appearing in the game, should their score still count towards the average? Should we trust that this is really unbiased, or should we be raising our torches and pitchforks to make sure that they give everyone an unbiased score? Snow Mike Mike, the floor is yours. Light up my torch and pitchfork. No, I'm just <laughs> right now. We're going to Japan. <laughs> Uh, for me, you know, that's a really interesting one to unpack and really talk about because I've always looked up to you, Greg, right, as a community member here. Sure. You've done a terrific job really growing as a host, being in different video games now as a voice actor. And you've done a terrific job always letting us, the community, know, hey, I'm going to be in this game. I'm still going to give you my real thoughts and opinions about it because you've always taken the stand with companies of, hey, no matter what we do, we're still going to be authentic. We're still going to be real with our group. And if I don't like the game, I'm going to tell you I don't like the mm -hmm. game. If I'm going to yell Skate 4 at the end of an EA Plays conference, I'm going to yell EA Play or EA Skate 4. I never told them that. But <laughs> I just did it. For me, <laughs> I, I can go both ways, right? I don't know if it would really affect, affect my opinion on seeing their perfect score and knowing that his face and likeness is in the game, knowing that the team mascot is in there. For me, as a community member, I would celebrate that, right? Oh, cool, Greg's in this game. Alana Pierce is in this game. Right. She liked Gears. That's great. I love Gears, you know? Yeah. So I don't go as far as really diving deep into it. Conspiracy theories, are they getting paid off? Is this review really that well endowed? But when you look at the game reviews, right, there's a lot of people positive. There's a lot of people negative. So... Maybe they just like the game, even if the guy's face is in there or not. Yeah, this is a weird one because obviously we know, being Western and being in the video game industry, how important Famitsu is. But as someone who doesn't consume Famitsu because it's not in my language and it's not in my, I'm not, I'm not living in Japan. I I don't know the read and temperature on what Famitsu is in terms of the Japanese gaming populace, right? I know that the perfect scores are still a really big deal, so it gets weird real quick because I think. There's a world of difference for me, you know, Greg Miller being in a game or whatever. And usually, you know, it's just friends of mine, like Shirtless Spider-Man, you know, usually. Uh, or my dog, you know, or Shirtless Arachnid Man, those kind of guys. But, it's like, for, there's a world of difference for me with me and Kind of Funny being in a video game versus Famitsu, right? That's a different name. And I think the closest analog is IGN. I was going to say, let's switch it And so IGN. when we get there, I remember being there. And I, if you remember, um, oh, God, I want kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong. I want to say it was Mass Effect 2. It might have been Mass Effect 3. That Showbot did an online campaign of like, hey, put me in Mass Effect. Put me in Mass Effect. Oh. And she got it. And she was a reporter in Mass Effect that asked Commander Shepard a few questions. I think it was 3. It must have been 3. And I remember at the time, I had a problem with that. Where I was like, and it wasn't, I didn't have a problem with Jess doing it, obviously. My problem was, if this happens, we have to be, we have to change our coverage. We have to disclose. We have to say, hey, just a heads up, this is the thing. And I forget if that's a battle I won or lost. I want to say it is because I remember it not being a deal where I think the review did say, hey, just a heads up, this mm. happened. In a very similar fashion to when I was in my first game, um, uh, Lego Marvel Superheroes, right? Uh, 
or no, Lego Avengers. Uh, I remember they went out of their way at IGN to have Alana review it, I believe, and put a thing at the top of like, hey, by the way, Greg's in this, but she doesn't even know him and didn't work with him, so that's a thing. Like, there's ways to handle it, I think, that Definitely. works. And that's, again, what we always come back to. This Everybody's confirming it was Mass Effect 3. Thank you. When we come back to this thing here, the problem, as always, right, is the lack of communication. It's the lack of disclosure. It's the lack of, hey, this is what's happening. Yeah. And so it gets weird with... You know, technically, he's not editor in chief. He was former editor in chief. Uh, Brian's article goes on to point out the fact that, like, when you see this man, you think of or, uh, Famitsu. Like, that's how this works. You know what I mean? So I don't know where you would have disclosed that. Having the mascot in there is another ball of wax. So, like, okay, it's like painted on the side of a wall or something from the screenshot I saw. It's a whole bunch of, eh, and I, I think the you know people who are like this feels gross feel gross because they weren't warned. Mm-hmm. Like when you're reading the yeah. review, if there's not a single mention of like, hey, by the way. You know, you're going to see the former editor in chief here and our mascots in there. You know, we didn't think that. We took that. It's admitting it before it becomes a story. Because once it becomes a story and it's after the fact, that's fucked up. And, you know, for the thing here of like, what I would love to know, for the thing here, they talk about, you know, uh, it'll surely get in the Hall of Fame being the quote or whatever in there. Remember, Kojima scanned all his friends. And I don't know how much he disclosed of what he was going to say to them. Because if you remember when Jeff got revealed at uh, 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 TGS, right? When he got revealed and he was on stage talking, or was it TGS? Gamescom? Whatever. Gamescom, I think it was. When he, yeah, because it was One Night Live or whatever. When he was there and he got disclosed, he er, er, uh, uh, revealed, he said, oh, this is so cool. You know, I got skinned and you didn't even tell me what you were going to do with it, what it was for. So it's that thing of like, you know, when Jeff pops up and Jeff in there is Luden's fan, right? And he's got this weird like, well, come back. I mean, you know, I miss you. Like, he's, it's clearly this joke about how into Kojima and Kojima stuff yes. Jeff is. And so that's funny. But I wonder if at any point Kojima was like, by the way, <laughs> we're going to make you seem like an obsessed fan about yeah, this. Because yeah. I know Jeff doesn't care, obviously, when you see it. That's funny. He gets the joke. But it's just an interesting thing even here of like, was there a cringe at all from him when it was like, you're going to get in the Hall of Fame? He's like, oh, fuck. You know what I mean? Yeah. I didn't think you were going to use it that way. Well, that's an interesting one. You know, the dis- disclosure and getting ahead of the messaging, which we've learned over the past couple of weeks, is always key for the audiences, the Years. communities out there. <laughs> People are big on, give it to me white and black so I know what's going on. I can get ahead of this and I know how to judge it from there. I think it would be a big, big one as you put it in the IGN context, right? Of like Brian Altano being in a game. And if Brian was to review that, maybe I'd think differently. If it was Dan Stapleton out there and he gave the big press release of like, hey, just so you know, one of our IGN yeah. people are in this. We gave it this, but we're still looking at it as a, you know, a critic criticized eye yeah then i'd feel different about it yeah you know? and that's all it comes down to and that's what it matters right so i can't even talk about you know the credibility of famitsu for it but i think it is that just oof you missed the mark on telling people that was going to happen that's yeah. the problem you know what i mean we'll see what happens i mean i think it's still pretty cool to see people in games that you know and like right like, sure that's a big one for me oh, i yeah. love that yeah, yeah i mean like that I, I, it was awesome to see jeff Keeley in this game right like okay that was really really cool and then like uh Going through, and like, when Jordan, Jordan, Jordan Vote Roberts pops up, and then, you know, Conan got revealed with that otter thing. It's like, for this kind of game, this is cool. I like this. You know what I mean? And I, I even, I honestly, I was surprised how much I dug um, uh, uh, Guillermo del Toro's body. It's not his voice, right? They had somebody yes. else do the voice. Yes. Because that was my thing when, when, uh, uh, Kojima started showing his friends in this game. You're like, cool. Is Guillermo del Toro an actor? Like, is he gonna, is he gonna stick out like a sore thumb? But I thought, the combination of his persona and then the voice and then that becoming dead man. I was like, okay, I believe this and oh, I'm having fun with this. And this goes is good. really well together. That's right. Exactly. Plus, again, I, like I, why I cosplayed at him, I'm just happy to see more fat people I can cosplay as in video games. Everybody running around in these skin tight outfits. What the hell's going on? <laughs> Number three, your final Kojima piece of news for the day. Uh, while you were sleeping over the weekend, Kojima won a bunch of Guinness World Records for social media. This is Joseph Nope Over at IGN. Uh, Hideo Kojima, director of the Metal Gear franchise, and Death Stranding was presented with not one, but two Guinness World Records on Saturday as part of the Death Stranding promotional tour. Kojima has now officially been recognized as, quote, the most followed game director on Twitter and Instagram. Besides being known for his work directing the Metal Gear Solid franchise and Death Stranding, Kojima is also a prolific social media user, managing to accrue a Twitter following of about 2.8 million accounts on his English account. On his Instagram, Kojima has a little more than 888,000 followers. It appears that Guinness is being pretty specific about the game director portion of the record, considering Kojima isn't necessarily the most followed general game developer on Twitter. Minecraft creator Notch has about 3.7 million Twitter followers. If you combine Kojima's English account, 2.8 million, and his Japanese account, uh, 811,000, he still comes in as just a hair under Notch. That said, Twitter rounds the follower count after a certain tier, so it's possible the numbers are different than what we can see. 
You can just hover over them, I think, and it tells you exactly. Heads yeah, up, spoilers. I'm always on mobile. I think most people are on mobile. That's yeah, why that's they don't fair. see that's that. That's fair. Uh, beyond that, the closest, the closest runner-ups we can find at a glance are Oculus CEO John Carmack at 867,000 followers and former Nintendo President of America uh, Reggie fils at 459,000 uh, and Undertale creator Toby Fox at six. Wow, I didn't know. Six hundred, uh, six hundred, uh, six hundred seventy-four. Yeah. Well, I really wanted to say forty-seven there, really <laughs> badly. A uh, thousand or never Nether Realms. Ed Boon at five hundred sixty-seven thousand, just to name a few. Congratulations, Kojima. Congratulations. When Ron. I saw it and they were saying game director, I'm like, who are they trying to screw over? Yeah. <laughs> what? Whatever are they trying not to do this. He's on a world tour. He yep. just released a massive game under his new umbrella with Kojima Productions. Yeah. I mean. Put a little another accolade on the hat, you know what I mean? He's got to sleep sometime, going. right? He's got to sleep at some point. Never, Greg, never. He's flying all over the planet. He's doing world tours. Very disappointed we didn't see a San Francisco world tour. New York's got a great one. Yeah. Great art exhibit. Could Dan Riker was there. Hands. Dirty Dan Riker. I was very jealous of that. Yeah. They promised one in San Francisco. Came to San Francisco for four hours left. Uh, you could have gone to the San Carlos GameStop and stood in line and shook his hand there. Come on, Snow Black. Man. I wanted to do it really bad. <laughs> Not that far. It's far enough where I was like, no, I'm not oh, going. Yeah, sure. yeah, you know what I mean? Come on. Far for that. He went over and did game, uh, game spot stuff, though. I know Lucy James, and she talked to him that day. So it's kind of like I talked to him. It was great. Uh, it's a win. Number four. Stadia has put out a press release today with their launch lineup. Here's how it reads. In case you missed it, we're happy to share which games you'll be able to play on Stadia November 19th, 2019, and through the rest of the year. We're launching Stadia with 12 carefully chosen games on day one, with an additional 14 to be available by the end of the year. Titles available for November 19th are Assassin's Creed Odyssey, Destiny 2, The Collection, Guilt, but with a Y, uh, Just Dance 2020, Kine, Mortal Kombat 11, Red, uh, Red Dead Redemption 2, Rise of the Tomb Raider, Samurai Showdown, uh, Shadow of the Tomb Raider Definitive Edition, Thumper, and Tomb Raider Definitive Edition. Mike, what do you think? <laughs> that uh, unfortunately does not blow my skirt up no, right no, there. No, no, not at all. Uh, it's a tough sell for a lot of people who already have a bunch of consoles, right? All of these games you probably would have already played. You can get with Game Pass on some of them. You've probably passed over and you didn't want to play them anyway. So Google Stadia with this launch doesn't make me say, I got to go buy one immediately. Yeah. We'll see when we get to the end of the year. We'll find out impressions from everybody around the globe here next week. So we're really going to start to judge if Google Stadia is a great buy for people like me who have way too many consoles already, might not be ready for that Google Stadia jump or holding their cards for xCloud, which I personally am doing Ooh. because I don't want to start to split up my gaming segments now. 100%. I already have a PlayStation, Xbox, and Switch, PC. There's so many games, so many titles that you can buy on either one or the exclusives. Do I really now need to go buy another one with Google Stadia as opposed to Project xCloud where I mainly play on Xbox? Same ecosystem. It's going to yeah. share that ecosystem. I'm going to be killing it soon. Yeah, I'm very excited to see what they have up their sleeves. I'm hoping for something out of XO. Well, they said they're going to have something at XO19, so we'll see. Uh, for Stadia, though, yeah, this is... What we all saw coming, I think. And then when you finally see it spelled out, you're like, oof. <laughs> oof. What a, what a thing. And, like, it's back to the thing. Why didn't you just say you're doing early access? Why didn't you just sell the, hey, we're only doing early access for the first thing. This is how much it'll cost to get your controller and get your name and do your thing. Everybody would have been like, cool, no problem. Yeah. This is the kind of press release that gets put out there. And it's, like, ammunition for everybody who wants to go on the internet oh. and hate. They're like, finally, here's my chance. I've been ready to go for a while. I get to unload on these guys. I'm going to get Sirens on are on our end. We're, we're going to give them some positive. Some There's some great games here, right? Oh, sure. Assassin's Creed Odyssey you loved. Destiny 2 has been killing it with the Shadow Keep updates. If you are a lapsed Destiny 2 player, it's a great time to get involved. Uh, we actually saw Kine at Day of the Devs. Yeah. It was over there. That was a really Wasn't, weird music puzzler is what it's called. I think Samurai Showdown 2 was at Day of okay. the Devs too. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. And then, of course, Red Dead Redemption, the Tomb Raider saga, Thumper's a fun one. So there are some games that maybe if you're not a big-time video game fan or this is going to get you and the family involved. You missed involved, them somewhere. You, you want to see what here. it like. It's the same conversation we had uh, leading into it, right, where I've, I obviously, Stadia got announced. I, I want to try it, obviously, for work, but to on top of that, I'm like, I really want cloud streaming to work, so I'm like, I'm going to pay for it. I'm going to get in. I want to be on the ground floor. I want my name, all that jazz. It was also the idea, as we led up to it, that I didn't see anything they were really talking about. Again, you look at this list, and you can only imagine that day when fucking id Software called up and like, hey, oh, we're uh, delaying we Doom you. Eternal. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck. God damn it. The one thing. You know what I mean? But you look at this thing, and it is, I it, it reads just like I expected it to, where I'm going to turn this on 
play some stuff for the review, see how it all runs, what's Odyssey feel like, what's the latency like. I've played, you know, 130 hours of Odyssey, see what it runs like here. And then it, once we're done with that problem, put it, or that uh, uh, section, put it down and probably wait till 2020. Right, because 2020 is going to be when games start, hopefully, knock on wood, launching day and date. Mm-hmm. That's when there's an argument of where do I want to play Cyberpunk. And I know Cyberpunk isn't day and date from what it looks like. We'll see. Okay. But you know what I mean? Like uh, when they talk about it. When I get to those kind of games, am I playing them on this? Am I using Stadia? I did find it interesting, you know, a couple weeks ago, Darksiders Genesis, which is a game I've been excited about okay, yeah, since yeah. Uh, uh, Judges Week. They got their release dates announced. And it was coming to PC in December, consoles uh, next year. I'm like, fuck. And then it was like, PC includes Stadia, and I was like, Ooh. "Oh, my first Stadia okay, game!" That I'll okay. actually be like, "This is what I'm going to play it on." Yeah, yeah. Like, that's exciting for me. I'm excited to see when we get it what the tech works like. Is is it as good as it was with Odyssey? What do they got built out? All these different stuff. But this is so clearly an early access launch. Yeah. And the fact that they're acting, I think, a little bit more like it's a it isn't. And then like I remember how they were pulling back features and saying, "Well, you know, you know launch you can't do this. You can't." And it was like. That's going to hurt them so badly when they could have just messaged this completely differently and gotten around it. Yeah. And that's because you only get one chance at a first impression, right? I was going to say, you never know. Maybe next week you turn it on, everybody raves about how great it works, and people get excited heading into the holiday season. Could have a stitch of tones, but these it's 12 the thing, are not jumping me up. And right that's now. the thing is, even if you're excited about it, let's say, and I, you know, I hope to God it is, I turn it on, it's flawless. You know what I mean? I'm playing in the, the bad Wi Fi at the restaurant, whatever. It's all great. Awesome. It's still going to be like, hey, everybody, this tech works. And everybody, I think, is going to be like, awesome. Founder packs are sold out, right? Yes. Like, I don't know. This isn't half. Oh, there's no. And it'll be like crickets until you get to the next year. And then hopefully games start coming to it in a very specific thing. You make the best co- uh, point, I think, Snow Mike, Mike, as you often do, is that my hope, right, for xCloud is that, yeah, x 19 they're like, here it is, all the news, the 12, or was it 14, 12 or 14 games we're talking about from Xbox mm, Studios, okay. yada, 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 we talked about it last week. And then they're also like, we've had a great run of Xbox, uh, uh, you know, what is it, closed beta for xCloud right now. As of today or tomorrow or next week, we're putting it out for everybody. Ooh, still in beta, okay. still early okay. access, yeah, You yeah. can go, but you can go play Gears 5 for it, and you can do this, and you can try that. Because that, again, is way more exciting, because is what you're talking about, of like, cool, I already have the controller, I'm already, I already, even me, uh, you know, somebody who exists mainly in the PlayStation land, has, a, you know, my Xbox account, I have yeah. a history there, I, totally. I, I have Game Pass, like, I'd love to be able to jump in there and see that future unfold as well. Be really cool to see, I think this is going to be a fun arms race as we start to head into next year, but I'm a big Xbox guy, so that has my dollar bills over there with me. Hold on. Nanobiologist writes into patreon.com slash kind of funny games and says, Hi, Mike. It's a shame that you won't be on the XO19 watch along, nor on Friday's kind of funny games daily. So, since we have an Xbox fan in the building, what are you most excited for about this year's XO19? Last year didn't have much to add besides purchases, so are you expecting this year to be bigger and better? Are there any studios you're excited to hear announce? Any games? Thanks, and keep on living the dream. The Nanobiologist. Mick, thank you so much for writing in and the question about Xbox because you know I love the best box, Xbox. But I got to say I'm super excited about XO19. XO18 was a blast, right? A big one for me is the crowd engagement, the fans out there getting to celebrate something they love. You guys got to do it with PSX. We go to E3, we go to PAX, where it's just a celebration of games, the people who make them, the company that you love, that we bleed green for. And I think it's going to be a cool one to see. We go across the pond to London, right? They're opening up a brand new Microsoft store there. MC Fixer and the gang will be there. And I think it's going to be a fun time for me personally to see the crowd engagement, to see Major Nelson get up there with his team and have some fun announcements do i expect anything big of course not i don't think we'll really talk about scarlet there might be a tease at the end there but that's going to be a big e3 thing right there yeah i think project x cloud might be the main focus like you said small games some fun games to see we're not getting halo fable has been talked Mm. about can we see fable come out of the woodwork that would be great especially over with that audience i think that would be fun to double down over there. But for me, I'm really just excited to see everybody smile, see the energy in the room, see the green flying all across the screen, and just to have a great time for the weekend. I'm trying to scroll back here through the Xbox Twitter just so we can get it out there in case you missed last week's episode. And I will continue to fill like I'm filling right fill now it up while right I look for just the tweet. about Here it is. Uh, remember, they said XO19 kicks off with a special episode of Inside Xbox you won't want to miss. Love it. This is November 14th, of course. Uh, 12 Xbox Game Studio titles, including new reveals in PC. 
new PC and console game reveals for Xbox Game Pass, and then big Project X Cloud news. I want that big news. Big news for me, release date, maybe pricing on what it looks like. Are you going to loop it in with the Xbox Game Pass Ultimate Edition that has your Xbox Gold and Game Pass together? Would be great. We'll see what that looks like. I mean, you also have to think of Wasteland 3. We're going to talk about that mm, most likely with yeah. that studio. The Fable one would be really great. I don't expect anything massive for me to go crazy over, but the event itself I think is really cool. I can't wait for them to bring it over here to North America and have some fun in the state side, we'll call it. I was going to say, good save, because you, you know you're wrong. You it. it was in I Mexico. That is North it. America. This is why Kojima doesn't respect you. <laughs> what are you doing for it? Are you, what, are, what are you doing for XO19? Uh, unfortunately, I'm going to go surprise some best friends up in Minnesota, so I'll be on a plane flying around, or else I would have done a live react to it. Uh, those live reacts are always fun to do. Hang out with all of your friends, your small community, sure. and just chat about the cool stuff you see. I mean, every time it's always smiles and laughs with what – all the things we've seen, right? I still think of the last, uh, what's the PlayStation one that we watch all the time? State PSX? of Play. Oh, State of Play. Where they had that crazy game with all the smiling, you know, the poop was running around the Oh, toilet. yeah. What, what's hot like, him? What is this? It's the craziest thing I've ever seen. And we had a great time. Oh, Wadham, I guess, is maybe how you pronounce it. But I know what you're talking about. The yeah. Noby, Noby Boy one. I'm saying, Snow Mike, Mike, delay your flight, fly to SFO, <laughs> come over here, react here. <laughs> then I got to hear all these people. All these PlayStation kids, they don't even care. They don't oh know what's going God. on. You guys were boozing it up last year. We're not going to do that this year. the X, okay? You can't disrespect we the X. We weren't disrespecting. They were giving it to we you. We were enjoying <laughs> it while they gave it to us. I'm telling you, delay your flight. Come over here and do a reacts with us. Number five on the Roper Report. Overwatch Jeff, Overwatch's Jeff Kaplan. Man, i got to stop drinking. It's the coffee. When I just drink the coffee, I have mm. great conversations, but then reading doesn't work. It might be the energy I bring, too. You know, i got the whole office up oh, here on a Monday. i got I everybody do. pumped up. Are you pumped up, Kevin? <laughs> Overwatch's Jeff Kaplan on Blitzchung. This is Matt Perslow over at IGN. Overwatch game director Jeff Kaplan has expressed concerns about the punishment imposed on Hearthstone player Blitzchung. Uh, talking to the Washington Post, Blizzard's vice president and Overwatch game director said, quote, I was relieved when they reduced his suspension, and I think the suspension should be reduced more or eliminated, but that's just me. I'm obviously a huge supporter of free speech, he added. It's something that's very important to me. It got to me personally. I think the punishment was too harsh, and I was greatly relieved when they gave his money back. Uh, I think it was extremely important. Kaplan explained that the Overwatch team has had to deal with player suspensions before, and that it usually takes four or five days to reach a decision. But, as Blizzard President J. Allen Brock said, uh, in the opening ceremony of Blitz Con 2019, the company, quote, moved too quickly in regards to the Blitzchung punishment. However, Kaplan is clear that the reduction of Blitzchung's suspension from 12 months to 6 months isn't enough for his personal beliefs. He does note, though, that his opinion isn't shared unanimously with everyone at Blizzard. Quote, I think as individuals, I think as individuals, we all have very different feelings about what happened in regards to the Hearthstone tournament in Blitzchung, uh, Kaplan said. Uh, there is a lot of very different reaction among all of us. Totally. You know, I'd like to have the easy one-liner of like, hey, Jeff, you're a little too late. Yeah. But of course, it's a big one for him being one of the big heads out there in Blizzard and Activision to say this and have a stance, and we appreciate that, right? And like he said out here, you know, he's happy for it to kind of be reduced, the money given back, and he wished they acted a little bit, you know, more diligently, slowed down, and really thought out what was going to happen. But between Blizzard, that's a lot of heads, a lot of big-time people there, and they all have different expressions, they all have different feelings about what went on at that Hearthstone Grand Championship. Yeah, and that, you know, as we go back to it, is what's so difficult about the situation, is that I'm still angry about it, right? I still think it's fucked up. I still think there's a lot of different emotions inside of me. And so you want to be mad at Blizzard, but Blizzard employs how many hundreds of people that don't agree necessarily. Now, again... He's Blizzard's vice president. You know what I mean? Maybe he should have gotten off the bench a bit quicker. You know what I mean? He's not fucking cafeteria chef out here being like, <laughs> oh, I didn't want to say anything. I was afraid of my job. Like, here he is. Like, even that, And that's what makes it weird is that I, I feel even this then feels a little bit not coordinated, but like, where were you before? You know what I mean? Why weren't yeah. you saying anything? But I also get of like, I am also the vice president. I can't fucking come off the bench and say shit and immediately contradict what's happening as, exactly. all, as everybody tries to figure this out. You can't mix the water. You can't just start yelling over somebody else. And like you said, there's a lot of people in there. He might be the vice president, but there's probably yeah. 10 to 15 people in that boardroom making that decision. And yeah. no matter how loud he gets, there might be another 13 that over silent him and say, hey, you know, this is what we want to go with. And he's just going to have to eat it. But it is great to see him come out and say it maybe a little bit too late. 
BlizzCon might not have been the right approach there as the vice president here to say something during a big celebration. Brack just came out and said something. Maybe he doesn't contradict him right. during BlizzCon. Right, right, right. Fucked up situation, Snow Mike Mike. Speaking Will of fucked up situation. Will we see situation. maybe them totally pull back the suspension, but in a quiet press release, or will they have to make a big scene out of this? I, I think, think at this point, the they're question. no, they're down. They're, they've, this they is they just it. hold strong it's done. right here. They got through Blitz. Okay. They got through BlitzCon. Exactly. And every and everybody's excited about Diablo Four and Overwatch Two. So, whatever. You know what I mean? Ride it out. This was our decision. This is how it is. It's similar to what we talked about on Friday with. Uh, Epic, right? Banning that 17-year-old Fortnite cheater. Yes. Where it's like, cool, we, yeah, no, this isn't a gray area for it's black or white, you can't cheat. You're Got banned it. forever. Yep. And it's like, okay, like you have to sit with that decision. That's what we all have to do. Yeah. And, and you know, come to terms with it on your own. Number six, Twitch streamer trained for three months to try and break a 566-hour streaming record. This is Cecilia Akataku. You put this on there because you're king of the streamers. Yeah, I'm trying to be the next Twitch streamer like Gary Witta. The nitro no, rifle himself. You can, you I'm can out shoot there higher than both those guys. <laughs> Humans do lots of inadvisable things in pub things in public for attention. See hot dog eating contest, the worm. Uh, there is though a fine line between inoffensively asserting your existence and setting a bad example by putting yourself at risk. This is the debate at the heart of record setting. Right now, Twitch streamer Andrew Giant Waffle Bodine is attempting to break the record for most hours streamed in a month, 570. Bodine, 26, is living on three and a half hours of sleep a night and oh. streaming games on Twitch 19 hours a day. Quote, I've had to adjust the, I've had to adjust the rest of my off-stream life to a minimum, Bodine told Kotaku over email. I trained for about three months to get my... Circadian. Circadian rhythm? What's that? Sleep that's schedule? That's your sleep schedule. Yeah, oh, yeah. okay. Circa I, I, you remember cicadas? I don't like those bugs, but Ooh, that's a different yeah, story. Yeah, yeah, we don't yeah, like those yeah, bugs. Yeah. Uh, rhythm adjusted to the new sleep schedule. Currently, he is streamed for 192 hours and has 20 days left. Previous streaming records include It's Arm Armand, uh, 566 hours, Edison Park's 541 hours, and Zizarin's 506.5 hours. Bodine has streamed through the entirety of Death Stranding, 33 hours. He's wild away his days and nights playing Red Dead Redemption 2, <laughs> Luigi's Mansion 3, Escape from Tarv Tarkov, uh, Rocket League, uh, Factorino, uh, Rainbow Six Siege, and several others. Oh no, you might scoff. This poor guy has to play video games all day and night. How awful. Yet for years, Twitch streamers have struggled to keep themselves healthy while making a career off the largely unregulated streaming platform. Mega popular Twitch streamer Ben Professor Broman, uh, Bowman uh, put it best in his essay on Polygon. Quote, the only one who can turn off the camera is the person who benefits the most from keeping it on, he said. Adding that there are 168 hours in every week and he is expected to be streaming for the, as many of them as possible. It's a very interesting one, Greg. I mean, you guys turn on the lights here. You turn on the cameras. You just came off of a 24-hour live stream, so you know kind of the stress, the fatigue. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you guys are a little bit different with your company, right, as a company, as opposed to a single-person Twitch entity streamer that really feels the grind of how do I make it? What do I need to do? How do I become the next ninja on Twitch? And it's a lot of different factors, right? And a lot of people always think they boil it down to subscriber count, the follower count, how many hours in the day they can stream. And we see this give and take, this push and pull of people who want to go full time but can't go full time because it doesn't pay the bills. People that double down on themselves and go full time when maybe they're not ready or should go full Full time and putting a lot more stress on totally. themselves and so it's an interesting one but when we turn our attention over to this i mean 566 hours in a month is ridiculous that's Greg. a lot that is a lot right there and especially coming from giant waffle you know me being in the twitch verse since 2015 when you guys really founded this and went over to twitch i've seen a lot of twitch streamers and giant waffle is quite large he's not the largest but he's up there in that top tier he has a committed audience he has the community and he has a lot of backing and he's a very smart guy too from what i've seen when i watch his stream so yeah it's a very interesting move but the numbers are going to show, right? The numbers don't lie. This is all going to go up for him. It's already working, right? Exactly. He's never been, to, with all the respect, never, we've never talked to him on the games daily. I'm, I don't know how many times Kotaku's written about him, yeah. but like the story is spreading now because that's what you need to do. You, we, you know, all the time people ask me, I want to do what you do. I want to get into this. I want to do that. And like, it's so easy to start doing all this. 
moving to that next echelon, how do you move up the ranks? How do you get a, a bigger following means that you have to break out of the norm every so often. Yep. And so clearly that's what he's doing here, and it's working. Exactly, and he's playing the time zone game. When you really look at this, right, he's going to be affecting different time zones that you normally wouldn't reach here in America with yeah. your set 9 to 5 and then your 7 to 10 stream, right? You're going to yeah. reach out to different time zones. More people will come. But the biggest question that I saw in this article is who will stay? Right, that's always a big sure. one for when you're growing your community, you're being a Twitch streamer. Is it's great to have these big pop ups, a host, a raid. You get these people to come, and hopefully, your presence, your entertainment value, your gameplay will have these people stay. But the biggest one is how do you keep them long term? How do you make them a part of your community? Are they just here them? for the sideshow? Exactly. Right. They're not like when you go back to doing whatever you normally do. Do you lose all those people? Mm -hmm. And that's the stream, the struggle we see with so many of our friends who are streamers. Exactly. Right. Of like, they started playing Fortnite because they thought it would get them views. It did. Now they're a Fortnite channel. They'd love to play other things, but that's what they're doing. Totally. And a big one for us will be when he does hit this record, when he gets to those final days to see the numbers oh, sure. really fluctuate. Sure. Yeah, like yeah. This is going to be some big numbers now, but when we see it here and the achievement is met, the numbers are going to skyrocket. 100%. And it's going to be a big payoff for him. Who will stay? What does the numbers look like in general? Because now we're moving into the holiday season. Wouldn't you love a bigger paycheck? Wouldn't you just love to play video games all the time? Leave the camera on. Never go pee. Never eat. Never see your loved ones. Never even move. Well, that's what's happening right now. <laughs> but no, I mean, I think it's a fun one. I think it's a cool one. When you really think about it, right, for somebody like me or Twitch streamers, right, maybe you're never going to set a world record for jumping over a Lamborghini, flying over the Grand Canyon with a motorcycle. Sure. So you start to think of, like, what world record could I get? Clearly, I'm not breaking Kojima's, <laughs> you know, yeah. sub or Twitter counts. But this is something I could do. And so maybe he said that, plus the notoriety. This is going to help him raise up. But he's a pretty big Twitch streamer already. It's very interesting to see. But like I said, this guy's really smart. From all the things that I've seen, this guy knows what he's doing. This is what he wants to do. He's going to set his mind to it. It will be very interesting to see. Yeah. Good luck to him. Be healthy, though. Don't die. Sleep more. Figure out your cicada rhythm. Uh, Snow Mike Mike. I can't wait to see him crush this record or die trying, but either of those are still so far away. <laughs> if I wanted something more immediate, say what came to the Mom and Grop shops, where would I go? Greg, I would tell you and the best friends to go to the official list of upcoming software across each and every platform as listed by the Kind of Funny Games daily show hosts each and every weekday. Yeah. Oh, Kevin's already lost all his excitement, all of his energy. No, I'm still here. I got it. Oh, no, you don't. You, no, you, no, the no, Snowbike no, Mike uh, method failed you. No, I'm, I'm totally. You good. know what might help you, Kevin? Saving see? some money with our sponsors. We'll start with Ooh. Brooklyn and making your home beautiful is the ultimate form of self care. You spend a third of your life in the sheets. Don't you want to be insanely comfortable? Then be like me. And get your sheets and comforters at brooklinen.com. This holiday season, maybe it's time to gift the ones you love or yourself with something a little cozier, like bedding, loungewear, towels, and more. And lucky for you, Brooklinen is delivering comfort all season long. These are luxury sheets, robes, loungewear, towels, and more without the luxury markups. Brooklinen was the first DTC, that's direct-to-consumer bedding company, meaning they work directly with manufacturers and directly with customers. No middlemen, just great products and service. They've moved beyond the bedroom to offer essentials for your bathroom, like towels, shower curtains, and bath mats and even launched an ultra soft loungewear that makes you feel like you never left the bed like softness like comfort i mean who doesn't brooklyn has it all i couldn't recommend their products enough for graduates newlyweds friends or family or treating yourself to the bedroom upgrade you deserve graduates that's where they started with that one i was like i i, I recommend brooklyn to just people but i understand if you didn't know what they're telling you Things are happening in your life, and you're going to do that thing that I always do where I'm driving to the wedding or the event in my rental car, and I'm like, oh, crap, dude, should we have gotten him a gift? You oh. should have. It's the holidays. Just go and do it. You can go right now. Uh, get 10% off and free shipping anytime when you shop at brooklinen.com and use the promo code GAMES. Brooklyn is so confident in their product and their sheets, comforters, everything else comes with a lifetime warranty. Get 10% off and free shipping by going to brooklinen.com. That's B-R-O-O-K-L-I-N-E-N.com. Use the promo code GAMES. Brooklinen, everything you need to live your most comfortable life. Speaking of being comfortable, let's talk about my balls. Support for Kind of Funny Games Daily comes from Manscaped, who is the best in men's below-the-belt grooming. Manscaped offers uh, precision-engineered tools for your family jewels. Jingle balls to the walls, fellas! Listen up. Untribbed pubes are a thing of the past. It's time to gear up and get yourself the gift of shaving this holiday season. We're talking about the Manscaped Perfect Package 2.0. 
That's why this revolutionary cap, cap company, Manscaped, has redesigned the electric trimmer. Their lawnmower 2.0 has proprietary advanced skin safe technology, so this trimmer won't nick or snag your nuts. It's also waterproof, so you can use in the shower. I did all that this weekend. The Lawnmower 2.0 comes inside their Perfect Package 2.0, which makes for the perfect gift for the holiday season. It's literally everything you need to stay trimmed, cut free, and smelling nice down there. You already know about it. It comes with a crop preserver and anti-chafing ball deodorant. Uh, you want to smell good down there? Everybody does. You should smell it everywhere. It also comes with a crop preserver. This keeps your balls from sweating, smelling, and sticking. Uh, all these products smell good. That's why I like them. That's why I rub it on my balls each and every day. Uh, the Perfect Package also comes with a pair of Manscaped boxer briefs that will keep your junk feeling fresh all day as well. Uh, Tis the season to Manscaped, so get yourself, your dad, your brother, and friends the best gift of all, the Manscaped Perfect Package 2.0. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code GAMES at manscaped.com. Your balls or your friend's balls will thank you. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code GAMES at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. Use the code GAMES. Clean up your nuts and make Santa proud this year. <laughs> He's looking at that list. He Naughty, knows. nice, bad pubes. Harry. He's on it. <laughs> Final sponsor, Escape the Invasion. You've got to check out this game called Escape the Invasion. It's all about immersive experiences, and they just announced the launch of their new post-apocalyptic theme subscription box. Picture this scenario. You're in the middle of a post-apocalyptic world that has been ravaged by a deadly virus inflicted by aliens. Would you survive? With Escape the Invasion, you can find out each month you'll receive a box of clues, physical items, and evidence that will get you closer to survival. It's up to you to piece it all together, solve the mystery, and save humanity. It's been called an escape room delivered to your door where Fallout meets Alien. It's a great way to get off your phones and start connecting with friends. Or, if you prefer to play solo, you can interact with the online community, swapping theories and helping each other out. Right now, just our listeners can go to escapetheinvasion.com slash kfgames to get 20% off your first box. That's escapetheinvasion.com slash kfgames for 20% off your first box. Escapetheinvasion.com slash kfgames. See if you can survive the alien apocalypse. Out today! Romancing Saga 3, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Switch, Vita, it lives, and PC. Truck Driver, PC. The Mims Beginning on Switch. Star Police on PC. Ray Eager on PC. Dark Horror on PC and Mac. And Highway Game on PC. New dates for you. Watatum is out December 17th now. On Thanks for checking in for me. No I'm problem. Good. That's why I, I, you, you did it. I was like, I knew I missed a new date. I knew I had seen <laughs> one on the Reddit this morning and hadn't got it out there. Happy to toss it out there for you, Snowbike Mike. Greg, I'm going to hold you before we get into reader mail. Because I have a fun segment that, you know, I thought I'd bring to you. You're going to shoot me the look. You're going to say, Mike, this is awesome. Mike, I'm not really into it. Greg Miller, what am I passionate about? Video games. Yeah. Kind of funny. Uh -huh. My pugs. I was going to say the pugs. Splash <laughs> Sisters. Get them in there. Splash Sisters. But I also am very passionate about esports. Kevin, run the graphic because this is 60 seconds of esports with Snowbike Mike. Now just imagine somebody smashing a keyboard. That's the sound that I want to hear, okay? I'm going to give you a quick esports highlight roundup of the weekend because we had some big things going on. And Greg, sometimes you need a little esports in your life. So 60 seconds on the clock. Hit it. Let's go. China's FPX wins the 2019 League of Legends World Championship Finals. Greg, if you're not watching this, you are lost because it is awesome. They had an incredible intro show, big-time musical performances that would rival, if not beat down, on the Super Bowl halftime show. China's Fun Plus Phoenix, or FPX, has come out on top in this year's League of Legends World Championship Finals against European team G2 Esports. That story coming from VG247 by Emily Gira. And then story number two, Astral demolishes 100 Thieves in IEM Beijing. That's right, your 100 Thieves squad, my championship Sunday squad, couldn't pull it out against Astralis as they go down 3 -0. Mike Aransky sends you a shirt. Suddenly it's your team, huh? <laughs> hey, Get Mike. Hey, here. Sean. You guys are the greatest. Hey, Nate Shot. Uh, then we're going to finish it up with some 2K hoops. Your NBA 2K hoops. The bounce of the ball goes like this. No look. Sweeps. Old school. And the Warriors Gaming Squad Invitational. Hey, I hosted that. No doubt. Then over Sell there. Out! <laughs> down in <laughs> Dallas, the Big D overlooked and sees eSports win the Mavs Gaming Texas ticket. And of course, in our bag, secures the 
bag and the draft spot in the Wizards District Gaming Classic. That is your 60 seconds of esports with Snowbike Mike. Run it again, Andy Cortez. <laughs> Thank you for letting me take over that one on that. that. I loved it. Don't worry. It's helpful to me to have someone else talk on the show, and I'm sure people will enjoy it. Don't worry about it. First question to get all that bad Xbox taste out of your mouth, Woo! get all that esports out of your mouth, comes from Alex Wolf with the recent shakeups at PlayStation. Do you think PSX is officially dead, or is the chance it'll return even higher now? Thanks for all you do. Kind of funny. And shout out to the big, beautiful kids, Alex, who again wrote in to patreon.com slash kind of funny games. Are we ever going to see PSX again, Mike? Greg, I think we will. I think with how E3 is turning into kind of a fan festival as they're trying to market that one, we see EXO, which this week will show these fan events always pay off. A lot of people are big into it. On the opposite side, we got to think of it on the Compass C side, but coming from the community, a fanboy of these, I think they're the greatest, right? Going to PAX West, going to E3, going to RTX, going to a kind of funny live event. These things really pay off in the long run, building the community, supporting those people that put in their hard-earned time and their dollars towards your company. So I think, yes, we will. I think a big one is when they talked about the new leadership coming in, they want to change it up. They want to switch it up. They want to keep it fresh. And I think with this new generation, will be a perfect time to maybe implement PSX or maybe change up the naming, but definitely look into something like that. Yeah, I mean, I don't think you're going to get it soon. This year, there's not going to be PSX. There's not going to be some surprise announcement. Then it gets interesting because it will be, hey, here's PlayStation 5. Here's what we believe the box is. Here's what we believe the vision of PlayStation is. That's a big question, right? We've had for a while of them seemingly going behind the scenes, state of play, it's just a voice, that's great. To see the moves we've seen, right, of Herman being promoted to head of Worldwide, uh, to see Shu go over to these indie things, it seems like you're getting a lot of pieces on the board that are exciting in our new blood and what is their vision? What mm-hmm. did they think this is going to look like and what does what will define the PlayStation 5 era? I think, again, having a... PSX that, in a perfect world, it'd be really cool to have a PSX that lines up with the launch of PlayStation 5. Okay. Where yeah. if it was a, you have like, a, imagine if PlayStation 5 launches at midnight or whatever on a, fr- on a Friday. And so you do PSX as even a one-day event, maybe even two, starting on Thursday. But then you have it where you have a press conference Friday morning, so you're just dominating the news nonstop. Love Reviews it. are popping everywhere else. You know, People are putting up impressions. And then it is that at the stroke of midnight, right, you have Herman and Shu and everybody there, like Neil Druckmann, like they're giving out and selling the PlayStations right down the line that you're buying there. Never going to happen because a console launch is hard enough to do, <laughs> let alone do a live event in one. Not a chance. But that's what's so cool about it is coming together to celebrate that stuff. So even if it was next year, PlayStation 5 launches in, we'll say, probably, what, October, November. Then Game Awards is, as usual, Game Awards. Then that Saturday, Friday, Saturday, is a new PSX. And it is more around, hey, you've already bought in. Here's the PlayStation 5 sold this million things. Let's look ahead at what we're doing next year. And it's a live state of play kind of thing. There's a bunch of different ways to toy around with it and do it. But it all comes back to what this PlayStation think PlayStation will be in 2020 and going forward. Definitely. It will be interesting to see. I think another good one for me, or maybe a first baby step, would be to return to E3. No matter how you think about it, Mm -hmm. I think it was a big miss this year going to E3 down there and missing that splash of blue, right? You see the Nintendo red, you go over to the Microsoft Theater with Xbox, see the green, and a big one when we were up in Seattle with PAX West, when you see that splash of blue, you see that PlayStation logoing right over there on the side of the convention hall is a big imprint right there. It makes a big one for the community and the fans, so I think... Maybe returning to E3 would be a great option as well. Really get some buy-in from everybody that goes to those events would be great as well. It's going to be interesting. There's a lot of questions about what PlayStation is in the PlayStation 5 generation. We will see. Mike, before I let you go, you have an Xbox question from my dog Nick 96 from Massachusetts. Who wrote it into kindoffunny.com slash Patreon. Or no, patreon.com slash games. Happy Veterans Day, Greg and Snowbike Mike. I've never purchased an Xbox system. And I've been thinking, with Microsoft scooping up Double Fine, a studio I will happily follow wherever it goes, I'm considering picking up one. My question, though, is should I get one now or wait for Scarlet? Or do you think their games will be ported to Switch where I wouldn't have to buy another system? (laughs) If I'm being honest, most other Microsoft franchises don't entice me, but I do want to delve into some of Rare's titles on Xbox. Uh, Any insight into the potential purchase would be helpful, as always. Thank you for being a friend. Greg, that's a great question right there and a a really fun one to answer. And there's always the give and take as we head towards the end of this console generation, head into a next one, right? Do you save 
X amount of dollars and go buy the new console when it releases, have those launch titles, bank that they're going to have the backwards compatibility, yeah. the shared ecosystem of two games that we're seeing, especially with Overwatch 1 and Overwatch 2 now. What will we see out of that? But for me, what I would say to you, Kevin, give me the one. Hey, what's going on, my dog Nick? Let me tell you what, the Snowbike, my glowing endorsement of Microsoft and Xbox. If you are looking to get into the Xbox ecosystem, now is the perfect time. We're heading in to Black Friday. They have some great programs available. You can go out there and get yourself an Xbox One S and really blow the roof off of your family console play. And I got to say, this is a great time to jump in, get Xbox Game Pass. You can go out there, play over 100 plus titles for a very cheap number. Usually it's $2 for two months. Never know what you could find. But if you're in to checking out Rare, if you want to check out Double Fine, if you want to commit and just check it out for a low price, right now would be the time to strike, especially as we end out of this console generation. The Xbox One S would be perfect for you, my dog, Nick. And, of course, I'm playing on it. X will give it to you. That's all I got. Just wait for Scarlet. You're fine. Just wait. <laughs> just wait. I mean, it's a big purchase. Like you saw is it going to be? Or is it just going to be the st streaming service and everything else? And well, time? we'll what, see. Nice. But I mean, exactly. he's only looking forward for like a very select small stuff, right? If he was like, Mike, I can't wait for Halo, Gears. I can't wait for every first party title. I can't wait for all these 17 studios to give me some stuff. Then I'd be like, yeah, let's hold strong and let's wait. He's looking for Double Fine and Rare. It's going to be years before you get any Double Fine games that are exclusive to the Xbox. What do you want to play? You, you can play Sea of Thieves anywhere. <laughs> for that's, that's true. Is that anywhere. the rare game you're looking to go back and play? It's great. You should definitely go check it out. Is it, is it? Yeah, is it really I'm, good? I'm having a great time with Sea of Thieves. I think they've really turned a corner, adding a lot of gameplay features, adding a little bit more of a story and things to do around the island. And then, of course, the arena mode is really fun. Yeah. If you and your four friends here, kind of funny, got into the arena mode, you would share a good hour to two of just laughter and shenanigans. Here's what I would love to do, Snowbike Mike. All right, lay it on me. I'd love for you to come back here. I'd love for you and me to play Sea of Thieves. You do one here stream? Or just stream it. We'll just stream it. Okay. All right. And you teach me how to play Sea of Thieves. Heck yeah, man! I'll stuff. lock you in the brig. We'll drink some. We'll throw. Yeah, up, we need know? a drink. We'll drink. Yeah, fun. For sure, yeah. There's a cool harpoon now. The harpoon on the side of the boat. Let me tell you what. You could be 80 yards off on an island. I harpoon you in the back. Bang! You're all the way flying back onto the boat. Huh. It's cool as can be. All right. Cool. We can fight yeah, the right. megalodon. Get out there against the kraken. Some skeleton fortresses. All right. There's a raid now. Okay. Yeah. All with right. actual raid mechanics. It's really cool. I'm interested. Let's, Let's do it. We'll, it. We'll, we'll, we'll book something off there. All right. It's time to squad up. This is where one of you writes into patreon.com slash kindoffunnygames. Give me your name, username, platform of choice, and why you need help in a video game. I read here. The best friends come and find you, and everybody hangs out together. Today, your squad up is Snowbike Mike. Oh, really? Go to twitch.tv slash Snowbike Mike. Drop him a subscription, a follow, all that jazz. Snowbike Mike Sunday Tournament Series. Yeah, you play Gotta with people go all the time. And promote it. Every Sunday, we end the weekend with a bang. We invite all of the community to come play games together because that's why we play games, right? To yeah. share these experiences. And there's nothing better than having a fun, friendly competition. We keep it all positive. There's no negative talk, but we have all of our best friends come out and compete in different games each and every week. We allow you to vote on it. I get to selfishly shoutcast it with all of my friends, and we play games like like Super Smash Bros, Mario Kart, Dragon Ball Z. We've played Halo. We've played Gears of War. We've now played Call of Duty. We're definitely going to have another Call of Duty tournament this week. So if you and your friends want to sign up for an awesome 2v2 gunfight, come on and get involved. Twitch.tv slash Snowbike Mike. Do it. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for You're Wrong. This is where people watching live on twitch.tv slash kindoffunnygames write in to kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong. Tell us what we screw up as we screw it up so we can set the record straight. I got two to start it off from Nanobiologist. Number one, he says, so, uh, something of note, Shadowkeep will be free for premium stadium members, which every person is getting with the Founders Edition. Okay. Good okay. point. Like that. Uh, he also says, big news for uh, XO19 might be that iOS beta access is coming to xCloud. Right now, it's only available on Android devices. That is also true, and that'd be yes. great. I I'm on Apple. I need that yeah me too i need that uh dh canada says greg when talking about stadia you mentioned seeing samurai showdown 2 at day of the devs that was actually samurai gun 2 oh. a 2d free-for-all multiplayer game of the show the game coming to stadia samurai showdown a fighting game that came out earlier this year that is 100 percent me being wrong thank you very much for that um now where are we getting to see i'm trying to figure out if it's editorializing that's that okay uh yeah no, uh huh uh huh uh, okay. A Lord of Pwn says, Deal of the Day, Romancing Saga 3 is currently 20% off until December 4th. There you go. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. That seems like it's more news than I'll, I'll come back to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, 
Denny uh, Denimco says dr- uh, truck driver for PC is act- actually didn't come out today. It's been delayed until next year. Oh. Thank you very much. Sorry I missed that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. You got that. I got that over here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. That's not a you're wrong. I think he, no, you're wrong. No, yeah, I got this. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that's been kind of funny games daily. Snow Mike Mike, as usually, he killed it. Thank you, A Greg. consummate professional. I appreciate you, you always having me back. You gotta come back more. Start doing more here. I will always gladly come down from Lake Tahoe, the gem of the Sierra Nevadas, to come help you and the team any day to bring the hype, the energy, and the positivity. Thanks for having me. And this was actually the first time that I've ever hosted Kind of Funny Games Daily with a full-time representative. I know. Usually it's like, <laughs> hey, Snow Mike Mike, everybody's gone. You and Cheeks need to come do it. You need to go do this. We need help. There we go. <laughs> yeah. So it's been a great time with you. Thank you for having me on. Anytime, Thanks for man. everybody that came out and supported the 2K broadcast. That was really big for me. Yeah. And uh, I will be back anytime you guys will have me. All right. Well, twitch.tv slash Snowbike Mike, remember. The rest of your week looks like this. Tomorrow, it's me and Imran. Wednesday, it's me and Gary Witta. Thursday, it's me and Game Explains Ash Paul. And then Friday, it's me and Tim. Remember, the games cast is Thursday at 2 p.m. It's going to be myself, Fran, Tim, Ash Paulson, probably a whole bunch of other people excited to talk about a game that we can't talk about yet. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, until next time, no. Well, you know, patreon.com slash kind of funny games, all that jazz, Twitch. You, you understand the whole thing. You, they know it. Okay. You know okay, what I mean? Okay. Like, subscribe, share. Yeah, you know yeah, how it yeah, is. Yeah. Until next time, it's been our pleasure to serve you.